That would certainly be my preference. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, the very end of the year, once you guys, are, the seniors are gone, the AP test is over, like my teaching schedule gets a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But um, I still don't prefer them being added to the end of the year because <clears throat> it makes your AP test go from it, it'll keep it'll make a few people not pass the AP exam because they won't get quite enough practice in which for those couple people was a few thousand dollars in the long run so if snow got bad enough would they make an exception and give us some AMI days I don't know I don't think so but <clears throat> if there's a ton of snow it would be like it was well you may not have been in school yet but we did Saturdays we did like two Saturdays We've done where the first two or three days of spring break, they changed the school days. But we had like three weeks or four weeks of snow, so like we had to do something. If you don't remember that? No. Okay. You were probably in like first grade or not in school yet. It was a while back. <laughs> Do I just get kind of tardy if I have to go right now? Yes. Okay. I just didn't know if it was something else. But I like how I got it. Well, would you rather have Saturday school? No. That's what, I just want to make sure it wasn't like you're counting me absent or something. If you if you miss more than 10 minutes of class, well, yeah. Class. But I want to take eight hours. I do. I don't Welcome back, guys. Hope you all enjoyed your break. Uh, let's talk real briefly about... Let's talk real briefly about uh, how much more class time we have and what else to expect. So, of course, we will set aside a class or two for semester exam review. In fact, I'll probably print that out and give it to you next class so that you can start looking at it and working on it as much as you think you need to um, so that it doesn't wait till the last second. Um, but we have a few more things that we are going to do this semester. We don't have any more big assessments this semester other than the semester exam. Um, but about half the time, and I've not talked to Miss Cross, but about half, some years we do, some years we don't give like a quick little two, three question Riemann sum quiz. You don't know what Riemann sums are, but we're gonna talk about those today. So we'll talk about a few new things. Um, one or two of these things may show up as a question or two on the semester exam, so it is important that you put forth your best effort. But um, a lot of this is stuff, that's kind of like the introduction to second semester calculus. So your handout this morning is 64. 
So please number that. And the first few questions here should not need any calculus. <clears throat> but one of the things that we do in calculus is we can measure the area under a curve. So question number one, I already graphed y equals 5 right here. And I'm asking you how much area is between it and the x-axis. When you're asked for the area under the curve, that's assumed you're talking about the function of the x-axis. From x equals 2 to x equals 6. So how much area is there from 2 to 6? OK, and how'd you get 20? Okay, so rectangle, length times width, 20 square units. The area between the function and the x-axis is 20 square units. But I didn't have to tell you anything calculus for that question because that's a nice rectangle and we can find the area of rectangles. Okay, different function. What about the area from x equals 1? <coughs> x equals 4. How could we go about finding this area? Yeah, Chris. Can we like find like the area of like a square or like a rectangle and then subtract like or add like that little? Add this? Yeah. Okay, so just do them individually? Sure. So this is 3 by no, that's not 2. This would be a 3. This y value is 3. 3 by 3, so this should be 9. You guys okay with that? Okay. And then this is a triangle, so this would be 1 half base times height. And I don't know. This is hitting here. Six. So another nine is that what y'all are getting okay so total 18 square units see what's the function it's x plus two yeah, this shouldn't be 6. This should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This should be 3 by 3. So half of 9 plus 9. So, I don't know, 13 and a half. Is that better? Or you could have just done one trapezoid there too, right? Do you all see how this is a trapezoid? if you'd rather do a trapezoid instead of a rectangle plus a triangle. So once again, just based on that function, finding the area under a curve, which means the area between the function and the x-axis, we still didn't need calculus here because we can split it up into one trapezoid or a rectangle plus a triangle. We can split it up in the shapes that we know how to find the area of. Okay, the next thing I need to tell you is that any area under the x-axis is considered negative. Below the x-axis is negative values. Area below the x-axis is considered negative. So we're going to use this picture for the next three questions. And I'd like you to try this on your own paper before we say out loud. So question three, I'd like you to think about how much area is between zero and two. So this area for question three. Then take a minute and try to get the area from two to five. That would be this. And then see if you can piece those together to answer question five. So you do three and four and then think about five.
I'm guessing for question. Well, I'm sorry, I'll give you another minute. I suspect question four is probably going to be the most correct one. This is three by five, and it's a triangle. So base times height divided by two would be seven and a half or fifteen half square units. Area is unit squared. I'm going to say three is going to have a few more mistakes because this is also a rectangle. That's two by four. So base times height divided by two would give you four square units. But that's not correct. Why is it not four? Because it's under. Anything under the x-axis is considered negative. Even the area. So now, if we compare these two, if we know the area between 0 and 2 is negative 4, and we know the area from 2 to 5 is 7 and a half, then we can use both of these to give the area between 0 and 5, because it's just adding these pieces together. So negative 4 plus 7 and a half ends up being what, 3 and a half. You got a question? It's, I, just, I think it should be 3 times 6 over 2 for number 4. 3 times 6? Yeah, because it's 2x two two minus six. 4. Oh, okay. So if this is 6, this is 9. So 5. You guys okay with that now? Area below the x axis is negative. Okay. So, boys. Attention up on the board, please. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going through this pretty quickly, and you can tell I'm not counting these tick marks very carefully because this isn't how we really use this in calculus. But this idea carries over in the calculus. So we did questions one through five. Either they were triangles or rectangles or trapezoids, but we could actually count up the uh, amount of area under the curve. But where we will need this in calculus is what if it has some curvature to it, like x squared? And we want to know how much area is there from negative 3 to positive 3. Well, you've got some positive area here, but that's not really a triangle because this is not a straight line. And then we've got some more area here. But same thing. It's kind of close to a triangle, but it's not a triangle. So we can't just do a triangle. So in calculus, we do two things. We will talk about how to estimate this area, which is called Riemann sums. That's what we're going to be focused on the rest of class, how to estimate this. And even with something called anti-differentiation, which is when we underive, which is our focus of semester two, we can figure out how much area this is exactly, not just an estimate. So I will show that to you uh, probably before break. but is not going to be a focus until next semester. So turn the page. With that question, I basically want you to see that you can't use conventional trapezoids, triangles, rectangles, and just add up the pieces. If there's any curvature to it, you need some calculus. So Riemann sums, there's three different types of Riemann sums. There's considered a left sum, a right sum, and a midpoint sum. The process is all pretty similar, but usually get different answers here. So what a Riemann sum is, is we're going to go through here and we're going to draw some rectangles and we're going to find the area of the rectangles as a way to estimate how much area is under the curve. So when you, you're doing this, um, more rectangles is better, but for these questions you need to be told how many rectangles to make. So we're going to make three equal rectangles, but with the left sum we need to start out the left xmost values. 
So do you see how there's one, two, three, four, five, six? There's six in horizontal length on these questions. So if I divide that into three equal parts, each rectangle is going to take up two. So one rectangle is going to be in here, one rectangle is going to be between these values, and one rectangle is going to be between those values. That way they're equal. So if it's a left sum, you take the left most x value on the function and you draw it to the right. And then for the second rectangle, you take the left most x value and draw it to the right. And one more time, left most x value drawn to the right. So we're really just going to add up three, the area of three rectangles, but you have to know how to set them up. From the left one, I took the leftmost point drawn to the right, wherever the leftmost point was on the function. Leftmost point drawn to the right, leftmost point drawn to the right. The difference between that and a right sum is we're still going to split this into three equal pieces, but we're going to take the rightmost x value and draw to the left. So that would be here, that would be here, and here. I used the right side of each rectangle and drew to the left. Now, you can probably guess what midpoint is going to be, but notice when we do this, now we've just got three numbers we want to add up together. So I've got this rectangle that is 2 by, two by 9, so that is 18 square units in red. Actually, I don't want to do that. Plus the amount of area in this purple rectangle, which is 2 by 1, so it has an area of 2. And then this one, that's also 2 by 1, so this has an area of 2. So a left Riemann sum estimate of the area under x squared from negative 3 to 3 would be the sum of these parts, which would be about 22 square units. Now, it is pretty far from being accurate, but notice it's not, it may not be as bad as you first think. Because all of this area is supposed to be part of the answer, and this area is supposed to be part of the answer, and this area is supposed to be part of the answer, and this area is supposed to be part of the answer. But I'm getting some area right here that's not really part of the answer, and I'm getting some answer here and here, some area here and here that is not really part of the answer. But at the same time, I had this area that I never accounted for. So this and this makes up for that pretty close. So we can estimate that there's about 22 square units. So the only difference with the right sum is you start from the rightmost x value of each rectangle and draw to the left, but then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to compute the area of each little subdivision this is a 2 by 1, this is a 2 by 1, and this is a 2 by 9. So we're adding up the area of rectangles to estimate how much area is under there. Now usually the left sum and the right sum are not equal. This is just happens to be the function I picked and the x values that we picked. Okay, and then the other one is midpoint. So I'm still covering six horizontal distance cut into three equal subdivisions. So we're still gonna say rectangle one goes under these x values, rectangle two will exist under those x values, and rectangle three will exist under those x values. So if the left sum, you take the left x most value, draw to the right. Right sum, you take the right most x value and draw to the left. What is your guess about midpoint? The middle x 
Okay, so the middle x value here would be this. So that determines the height of our rectangle for this one. And the middle would be right here. And then all the way over here, the middle would be right there. So there's three drawn where the height of each rectangle or the width of each rectangle, whatever you want to call it, is determined by the value in the middle x value. Okay, so now we can compute this area. This is 2 by 4, so that has 8. My purple rectangle has an area of 0. 2 by 0 is 0. And my rightmost one is 2 by 8 again, so that would be 16. So using a midpoint Riemann sum, we get, thank you, 16 square units. So all the only difference between these is what determines the width or the height of your rectangle. Left sum, go as far left as you can. Midpoint, go in the middle. Right sum, go as far right as you can. But then if you can find the area of one rectangle, you just add them up. Now, sometimes it's not three, sometimes it's, I guess the worst would probably be like six subdivisions. You'd have to do six smaller rectangles and add them up, but that's what it amounts to. And just for, I don't know, in case you're curious, the actual answer is, so you know how close these estimate, the actual answer would be 18. So, somewhere in the middle. Usually somewhere in the middle of these two. Usually midpoint sum is a little bit more accurate. But again, you kind of need to see why this works or why it's a reasonable estimate because you're going to be missing some area. But at the same time, you're adding some area that's not really there. So these pieces, trying to fit into those pieces make it pretty close. The actual area under the curve is 18, and I'm only doing know that because I'm doing some other calculus I haven't shown you yet, but that's what we get. Okay, any immediate questions yet? Okay, then let's do the next little set as guided practice. I want you to try Number seven, to the best of your ability. See what you come up with. We'll check it, make corrections if needed. Then we'll do eight the same way, then nine the same way. And then I can let you practice a little bit more at your own pace. Although there's still some stuff we'll need to talk about at the end. Yeah, notice this is not three subdivisions, it's four. Usually it's a number that should help. Three would be harder than four here. How many rectangles do you all think you should do if you wanted uh, it to be as accurate as possible? What? 200. Four. Warmer. Maybe like something like infinite. There you go, infinite, yeah. Yeah. Even then, I should be always giving a final If you squeeze in an infinite number of infinitely thin rectangles, you get ex the exact area.
give everybody another minute here, but my answer on the board is not correct. I want to ask you why you think what I forgot. So how come 10 should not be the answer here, or 10 square units? Uh, yeah, this one should be negative because it's area under the x-axis, and this should be negative because it's area under the x-axis. So we should have actually been aiming for negative 8 square units. You guys okay with that and where those parts are coming from? I don't think you were watching me, but I almost messed up this third rectangle. You have to be very disciplined. Left value to the right. 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 It's easy to slip if you start going a little bit quicker. Uh, right now we're doing this. Number eight. So if you're okay with that, move on to question eight and try the same thing from the right. If you're not okay with that, ask what you need to ask about number seven, please. Yes. <coughs> it just means that there's more of it below the x-axis than positive. You'll have to. When we get to the back page, one of the questions will ask you about units, and it won't be generic units. It'll be like miles or something. So yeah, it'll make more sense conceptually when you're talking about a real problem. So. Is it like physics when you do left and right? It can, yes, it can have to do with that. Depends on what the function represents. Like, how do you have negative, like? Just like, just like y values can be positive or negative, they're negative when they're below the x-axis. We treat area the same way. Area above the x-axis is positive, just like the y values are positive, area below the x-axis are negative. But you have to know that. There's like no hints in here, you have to know to switch those.
Was that long enough for number eight? Anybody want more time there? Okay, Christian, yes, your group sir. needs to stop talking. Sorry, it, it's just me. It's just me. Did you get eight units there? Yes, sir, yeah. Oh, we're on number nine. Sorry, that's what we're talking about. Okay, everybody okay with this one now? Okay. Take one more minute and try number nine before you compare with me on the board. Okay, so where am I coming up with these values? Where's this negative 3.375 coming from? Uh, the, the thing right there, the big red box. Uh-huh. Midpoint. It has a Rectangle. width of one. How am I getting this length, though? Because the, the equation. Okay. The equation is x cubed, and what am I plugging into that? Negative one and a half. Right, the x value that's in the middle because it's midpoint sum. Good. So how do you do the next one then? Oh, 0.5 times 0.5 is... The yeah. x value is 0.5? No, 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 no. x value is negative 0.5. Okay. And then you add all those together. And then you add the other ones. Actually, this should be negative 2, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what Okay, I had stopped here. Any guesses why I may have stopped? Yeah, do you see how this has the same dimensions as this one? And this one has the same dimensions as that one? This is the positive version of this, and this is the positive version of this. So when you finish adding those up, what should it come out to be? It should come out to be zero. Okay, so that kind of gives away the next question, but <coughs> exactly how much area do you think there is between negative 2 and 2? Uh, zero. Exactly zero, because there's this stuff below, and then this stuff above, and those are exactly equal. So this is a positive, this is a negative. So the midpoint sum this time just happened to end up giving you the exact answer. But usually it's just an estimate. You can't assume that any of these are going to be correct. Usually it's somewhere in the middle of a left sum and a right sum. Usually midpoint's pretty accurate. We will also do trapezoidal sums where we do trapezoids instead of rectangles, but that's not for today. But conceptually, if you can see that the amount of area under the x-axis from negative 3 to 0 is equal to the area above the x-axis from 0 to 3. So they balance out, so the actual real area there is 0. Okay, so on the next page, now I'd like you to go a little bit more at your own pace here. This function is harder to work with, so you may want to use a calculator to help you find some of these links. But it's asking you to do a left sum, a right sum, and a midpoint sum. It's got a graph there to help you. 
and it says five equal rectangles, but your, your work will be messier. You'll have more um, fractions in your work, more decimals. So I'm not going to do these on the board. Make sure you guys read the full question. If you do like three rectangles or four rectangles instead of five, you're going to have to redo all of your work. So. Do you include the little triangle up there, or do you do the triangles? Well, when you're doing the left sum, you don't. You're not trying to break things into triangles. You're just trying to go from here to here. So your next one would be this y value to the right. You don't care about any of those little pieces at all. They don't have any effect for your estimation. This is just so I know that this is like and then I went too far and I was only two. All the way to So it's two? All the way to So I see it's three. And then that was one. I'm not, I don't think you need a calculator till maybe the last one. share my picture though for the first one if that helps you make sure your rectangles are in the right spot
Again, I don't think you need a calculator for the left sum or the right sum. You should be okay. But the calculator is kind of needed for the midpoint because some of those values are a little messy. But I do have the answers. So if you would please let me check to make sure those are right before you move on to the last page. The last page is the same stuff except it does get you to think about what the area might represent and it gives you the values in a table instead of a function or instead of a graph. Which is often how your AP test is going to do it. So, so this would plug in the x value the y and multiply the y with the original x. The y times the width of the rectangle. Not the <coughs> yeah, it's just those y values in the middle are not nice whole numbers like they were. Because he, he was the 
Okay, so when you're doing this, what you really mean is negative seven cubed. That's not a big deal, because cube and something, negative times a negative times a negative. Times a negative, times a negative. But over here it matters, because your calculator is squaring seven and then multiplying it by negative. And what you mean is negative seven squared. This area needs to be positive. It's all above the x axis, so a negative answer is above the So over here you need to put negative seven in parentheses with the square. Did you all have interest for the first two? Uh, I am. I'm just I'm assisting. Okay, what's your answer for the first one? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I agree with those three. What the? Yeah. I didn't get either of those. Oh, we need to check it one more time. This is exactly that. It's not exactly that. Sorry. It's not exactly that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On, on, on this first one? Right. It's not exactly that. You have to think about You've got the function and the x value, so you can actually figure it out. So you can actually figure out the y value. That's why I'm saying it's a calculation. What's that come out to as a decimal? Okay, that's not what I got, but let me double check mine again. I'm in a different answer.